Back in 2009, people in Ishikawa, Japan, saw a kind of rain no one's ever seen before. It was raining tadpoles. First reason is that the wind that day was so strong, it lifted and carried all those tadpoles away in no time. The second possible reason is that big birds, such as gulls, just dropped them while they were flying to their nests. Some scientists believe these creatures were hauled off the ground by a water spout and rained down later. By the way, that day, people found not only tadpoles, but also frogs and fish instead of puddles. And yep, it can be raining worms, too. Some people claim they've seen snake rains. Yay! It was a lovely spring in 1876 in Bath County, Kentucky. Mrs. Crouch was making soap in the yard of her house when she suddenly noticed it started raining meat. It wasn't ground meat. Those were large, 3 inches in diameter chunks of meat falling right on her. Two volunteers were brave enough to try that grisly-looking meat of unknown origin, and they said it tasted like lamb or deer. Well, they were no foodies. It turned out to be beef. Such cases were registered in Europe, too, and the only logical explanation of meat showers is that buzzards flying over just drop meat pieces they say for lunch. With no luggage, their bodies are lighter and they can fly easier. Wow, I wish it rained donuts on me once. Rains aren't unusual for Oakville, Washington, but this one still doesn't have any solid explanation. Instead of common raindrops, people watch translucent jelly-like blobs falling down from the skies. These little things covered about 20 square miles. Those who got really close to that sort of rain said they felt bad the next day. Scientists studied those blobs and realized they contained human white blood cells. But other tests later showed it wasn't true. Some people think these might have been evaporated jellyfish, which resulted in rain, or it could simply be some waste from a commercial plane. Almost the same thing happened in 2012 in Dorset, UK. During a hailstorm, people found gelatin balls together with hailstones. Researchers collected these goopy balls and stored them in a fridge to study later. Turns out it wasn't necessary since the slimy blobs didn't melt at room temperature. No one is sure even now about where the balls came from, but the first idea was that those were eggs of some aquatic animal carried by birds right up in the sky. Later tests proved that the jelly substance was a chemical that acts as a water lock and is used in many commercial products, even cables to protect them from water. Australian spiders are notorious, and to frighten people, they even learn how to rain. Spider rains are a pretty common thing for Australia because of ballooning. They climb up trees, then spin strands of silk, and that's why the wind can carry them away. Usually people don't notice it, but when it's wet, hundreds of spiders climb up to more desirable places. People say that when it rains or snows, it's possible to see spiders literally drift down on those webs as if they were balloons. If you ever travel to the Mekong Delta, you'll probably have a chance to see glowing balls rising up from the water and beelining straight into the air. The locals call these the Naga Fireballs. Sizes may vary, so these reddish balls can be as tiny as a cherry and as large as a watermelon. During the night, you can see dozens and sometimes even thousands of fireballs. Scientists don't have any solid explanation why it happens, but it's probably flammable gas released by the marshy environment. Still, a local superstition claims it's all because of a giant serpent living in the Mekong. Tornadic waterspout is a tornado that doesn't occur on land, but on water. The speed of the tornado can be really high. The water is collected and partially pulled up. It manages to pull fish and even turtles up into the air. Actually, raining fish can also be explained by this weather phenomenon. The same might happen on the snow, too, but it's really rare. There are only six pictures of snow spouts, four of which were taken in Ontario. This weather phenomenon requires that the water is warm enough to produce fog while the air temperature is really cold, next to impossible. Lava is red, sky is blue, I'm on bright side, and so are you. Okay, I made that up. But the part about the lava being red can change. That's true, especially if you see the lava flowing from Kauai Jen volcano located in Indonesia. It has a typical red color during the day, but at night, it turns luminescent blue. No mystery behind it, just tons of sulfuric acid. This volcano also has the largest acidic crater lake in the world. The water there is so turquoise, you want to jump in immediately. But you probably already guessed that you should never ever do that. The fire on that volcano is also blue, and it's the largest blue fire in the world rising up to 16 feet. 
In some places, water may look like glass. White salt ponds might look like windows or even portals to the world underneath. They have their look because of salt evaporation, and such lakes can be found in France and India. But the Cargill salt ponds in the San Francisco Bay Area look even crazier because of vibrant colors. The shades vary. It can be deep blue, grass green, orange, crimson, vermilion, and even magenta. The color difference is all about the different levels of salinity and tiny microorganisms living in those ponds. On the shore of the Baltic Sea in Kaliningrad District, Russia, there's an enigmatic national park called Dancing Forest. The pine trees are all crooked and twisted there. The forest didn't appear until the early 60s, when the pines were planted to make the dune sand in that area a bit more stable. It's probably the unstable sand that made those trees twist that way. Another reason why those trees are so crooked might be strong winds. Some people claim it has something to do with supernatural powers. They say this forest is a place where positive and negative energies meet. Locals believe if someone climbs through one of the rings in those trees, it'll add an extra year to this person's life. The throbbing hum in Taos, New Mexico has driven locals crazy since the 1990s. Low-frequency hum doesn't let you sleep normally. Even though scientists tried so hard to find the source of the hum, they failed. They blamed it on mechanical devices and even animals. The West Seattle hum, for example, was related to toadfish. Different variations of hum were also heard in the UK, Australia, and in some areas of the United States. Luckily, only about 2% of the world's population can hear it. Noctilescent clouds, or simply night clouds, are so rare because 1. they only form in summer, and 2. they can only be seen at latitudes between 50 and 70 degrees both north and south. To see those clouds, the sun should be already below the horizon, but the clouds still have to be in sunlight. It's possible for the highest clouds in the atmosphere, which are located about 50 miles up. We can't see them during the day because they're too faint. Fairy rings, also known as elf rings or pixie rings, are the enigmatic rings of mushrooms that appear in grasslands and forested areas. Scientists can't explain why these fungi can form nearly perfect circles. But the superstition claims that fairy dances would burn the ground causing mushrooms rapid growth. In fact, it's partially true. The mushrooms grow in places where a grass withered. The Amazon River, one of the longest on our planet, stretches for 4,000 miles, which is more than a drive from Vienna to New Delhi. But there's one river in South America that beats the Amazon River twice. First, it's wider. Second, nobody ever saw it. It's an Amazon underwater twin called the Hamza River, and it runs 2.5 miles underneath. Scientists found it 10 years ago, back in 2011. Don't blink, or you'll miss this rarest weather phenomenon. Red sprites are electrical discharges in the sky that look a bit like an aurora. It's super powerful, about 10 times stronger than any regular lightning, but it lasts just a couple of seconds. They were first photographed in 1989, and there are still very few photos and video recordings of this lightning. To make a video that can clearly show red sprites, it should be at about 7,000 frames per second. Well, I'm out. Hold on to your hat, my friend. These internet users came across some hauntingly spooky stuff IRL. But I'm guessing you'll want to stay away even from these pics. Picture this. You're boarded and ready for takeoff in a huge Boeing jet. It's your first time on an airplane. You were scared, but people kept telling you it was safe. You've convinced yourself it would be all right when the pilot comes on the speaker with some disturbing news. Good morning, folks. Our flight has been canceled for safety reasons. It appears that a cloud of bees is hovering close to one of our wings, and we'll have to remove them before takeoff. I have to say, this is a first. I have to say, I'd like to get off, please. Now let's say you always take the long way to work. It's one of your favorite bits of the day because you can enjoy a peaceful walk surrounded by beautiful scenery. You're passing across a muddy pond area like you normally do when something strange catches your attention. What on earth could that be, you ask yourself? Apparently, it's a colony of reddish worms just casually existing. I think my stomach just turned a little. Have you ever backpacked anywhere around the world? If you have, then you were probably worried about one thing and one thing only – bed bugs. Getting into a new hostel, the typical routine is to check your mattresses. 
The worst thing is to sleep in a bed filled with these little creatures and then have to wash all your clothing the next morning just so you won't pass this around to other establishments. If you ask me, this appears like a bed bug and sci-fi beetle had a fight in this person's bed and this is what was left. Well, jokes aside, it reminds me of the remains of some bug. Which bug? I have no idea. I'd tell this woman and all hostile owners to use some kind of mattress protector, just so that backpackers all over the world can stop sweating so much over these tiny creatures. Now, you've just won an all-inclusive trip to Hawaii. Ah, the white sandy beaches and the amazing sunsets. You're happy to leave your fancy hotel and take long walks on the beach. But wait, what's that? It appears like a lobster shed its tail and the remains came floating all the way to the sand. But according to experts, that's not a lobster. They wouldn't shed just their tail. That appears to be some kind of isopod. Isopods are crustaceans that look somewhere between shrimps and lobsters. That's why you thought it was a lobster, huh? They also look like giant roly polies Do you know what these are? Someone had a roly poly infestation in their house, and uh-oh, it does not look like something you want to have to deal with. Imagine spending your days hunting these tiny creatures all over your furniture. No thanks. Now, when I was a kid, I loved playing pranks on people. But I would be the first one to be completely spooked when someone played a prank on me. I'm guessing the person who ran into this thing on their office wall wasn't too pleasant. But hey, maybe it's karma, right? What goes around comes straight back around. Imagine it's a sunny Sunday morning and you went on a hike with your best friends. You hiked up a pretty steep mountain covered in knee-high vegetation. You know what that means, right? Bugs. The great thing about bugs is that they never cease to amaze you. There are endless varieties of extremely rare and never-before-seen bizarre bugs. The first one you met was this thing right here. It fell off your dog's back. It resembles a jackfruit seed made it with a spider, and this is what came out of that union. Hopefully, it's just a bizarre insect and not threatening in any way. Your sock also picked up a few buddies along the way. Look at the number of ticks your sock protected you from. The next time you go on a hike like this one, you should take some kind of bug repellent with you. But a strong and effective one. You know, like an ultrasonic repellent that disorients ticks, so they'll never find the way to your juicy socks. And speaking of bugs, quick test here to find out if you're the type of person that loves or loathes the great outdoors. Imagine it's early in the morning, and you just woke up in a remote house found deep inside a forest. You step outside, and the first thing you see on the porch is a snake casually passing by. Would you take a selfie with it, or close the doors and hide back in your covers as fast as humanly possible? Or maybe you just woke up, opened the door to the outside world, and got to be the sole witness of a bug molting. Would you shed a happy tear or be disgusted by it? I mean, look at it. It seems like a baby Pokemon. So cute. Ah, it's summertime. My favorite time of the year. You can enjoy the pool until late in the evening and meet your friends and family for a Sunday outdoor picnic. But there's one thing that really annoys me. Bees. Eating outdoors usually means having to share some of your juice or yummy food with a bunch of bees. If only some genius person invented something that kept bees away from our food. Like some ultrasonic frequency we could blast on our speakers. Or some kind of decoy nest that was more interesting to the bees than my picnic food. Oh, or maybe this. I guess this will do. Simple but effective. I'll try it out and tell you if it worked out for me. The best thing after a hard day's work is coming home. Except when you're welcomed by this thing. I mean, how did this spider even get here if you live in a city apartment miles away from any real greenery? That's a mystery I'll never solve. You take your 5-year-old to play in the local park. She's in a digging phase, so as soon as she gets there, she starts digging up the whole place like a Jack Russell Terrier. You watch her have buckets of fun when suddenly you spot a shiny blue thing crawling out of the hole. What on earth? You think to yourself. You grab it with a stick, and it reveals itself. A centipede. 
You know, the things that burn you with their venomous legs? Best to put it back in the hole and move to another park. If you could choose any movie or TV series to live inside of, which one would you choose? Most likely some cozy rom-com, right? I'm guessing no one, or almost no one here, would choose to live life as a Last of Us character, right? But it seems to me like this person had a Joel moment, if you ask me. This thing crawling out of the forest floor is a fungus that imitates a human hand. I mean, does life imitate art, or is it really just one giant messy blob? Remember when we talked about backpackers? Well, this person had a similar problem as they do. Apparently, they took a bunch of clothes to wash and dry, and this is what the dryer filter looked like afterward. There are maybe a hundred little buddies in there. Ooh. Out of curiosity, do you know why they're called bed bugs if they hide on the floor and not in your bed? They crawl up to someone's bed at nighttime because they can sense carbon dioxide emissions, also known as they can sense your breath. If this isn't a horror movie plot, I'm not sure what is. Hmm, where do I even start with this one? I'd say this piece was actually a prop from a Tim Burton movie that somehow got lost and ended up in your vegetable basket. It's supposed to be a yam, but it's shaped like Grinch's hand if he were white instead of green. Oh my, in my wildest dreams, I couldn't make this stuff up. Today, I'm going to tell you about creatures that had unique features which allowed them to grow to incredible sizes. They were some of the most impressive animals to have ever existed on our planet. The Argentinosaurus is a genus of sauropod dinosaurs that lived approximately 94, 97 million years ago in what is now South America. Scientists think it was one of the largest land animals ever, with a length of up to 100 feet and a weight of up to 100 tons. A farmer stumbled upon a giant leg bone while tending his cattle. That's how he discovered the first fossils of the Argentinosaurus in Argentina in 1987. Further excavations uncovered more bones, revealing a massive dinosaur that would have dwarfed most other animals of its time. The Spinosaurus, meaning spine lizard, is a genus of theropod dinosaur that lived around 112, 97 million years ago in what is now North Africa. It is believed to be one of the largest carnivorous dinosaurs to ever exist, with a length of up to 60 feet and a weight of up to 23 tons. The Spinosaurus is known for its distinctive elongated sail-like structure on its back. It was likely used for thermoregulation. It also had long crocodile-like jaws that were lined with sharp teeth. This allowed the creature to catch and eat large prey, such as fish, crocodiles, and other dinosaurs. The first fossils of the Spinosaurus were discovered in Egypt in 1912. The sperm whale, Phaseter macrocephalus, is a species of toothed whale that is the largest tooth predator on Earth. It also has the largest brain of any animal species. It is found in oceans all over the world and can dive to depths of up to 7,000 feet in search of food. You can easily recognize sperm whales by their massive, block-shaped heads, which can measure up to one-third of their total body length. They have dark brown or grayish-blue skin and a distinctive wrinkled appearance. The Titanoboa is an extinct genus of a giant snake that lived approximately 60, 58 million years ago. It is considered to be the largest known snake ever. It could grow up to 42 feet and weighed around 2,500 pounds. The first fossils of the Titanoboa were discovered in a coal mine in Colombia in 2004. This discovery meant a lot because it provided insights into the size and behavior of snakes during the Paleocene era, as well as the overall climate and ecosystem of the time. The blue whale, Balanoptera musculus, is the largest animal on Earth, measuring up to 100 feet in length and weighing as much as 200 tons. These marine mammals are found in oceans all over the world and can live up to 90 years. Blue whales have a long, streamlined body that is usually blue-gray in color with mottled patterns. They have a small dorsal fin and two pectoral fins that are about one-third the length of their body. Blue whales feed on tiny shrimp-like creatures called krill, and they eat a lot. A single adult blue whale can eat up to 8,000 pounds of krill in a day. The Leedsichthus is an extinct genus of large, bony fish that lived during the Jurassic period, approximately 165, 155 million years ago. 
It is believed to be one of the largest fish that have ever lived. Some estimates suggest that it could grow up to 50, 55 feet in length. The first fossils of Leedsichthys were discovered in England in the 19th century, and more recent discoveries have been made in other parts of Europe, South America, and Africa. Despite its enormous size, the Leedsichthys was a filter feeder, similar to modern-day whale sharks, and likely fed on plankton and other small organisms. The creature did it by simply swimming with its enormous mouth open, filtering water through its gills. The Pterodostro is an extinct species of flamingo-like birds that lived approximately 70, 35 million years ago. They were relatively small birds with a wingspan of about two, three feet. And they were known for their distinctive long, narrow beaks equipped with comb-like structures used for filter feeding. The Pterodostro lived in shallow bodies of water, like lakes and lagoons, and mostly fed on small crustaceans and other tiny organisms. The animal filtered them from the water using the comb-like structures on the inside of its beak while swimming through the water. The African elephant is the largest land animal on Earth and one of the most recognizable ones. There are two species of the African elephant, the savanna elephant, Loxodonta africana, and the forest elephant, Loxodonta cyclotus. You can see them in various parts of sub-Saharan Africa. These creatures can be identified by their large size, gray skin, and long trunks. African elephants can grow up to 13 feet tall and weigh up to 7,000, 14,000 pounds, depending on the species and gender. The Bermuda Triangle is one of the most heavily traveled shipping routes in the world. Some skeptics believe that this fact solves the Bermuda Triangle mystery. Statistically, the busier the area, the higher the frequency of accidents and disappearances. While this makes sense, it's not the frequency of disappearances that's responsible for the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle. It's the lack of explanation or wreckage found. On his very first voyage to the New World in 1492, Christopher Columbus sailed through the Bermuda Triangle. Columbus reported that one night, when he was on the deck of the ship, he noticed a giant light appear in the distance, unlike anything he'd ever seen before. Columbus looked at his compass for direction, and it gave off erratic readings. You might have noticed that the Bermuda Triangle doesn't appear on any world map. This is because official institutions refuse to acknowledge that the area actually exists. No one exactly knows how many ships and planes have disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle. The rough estimate is 50 ships and 20 planes. Most of the time, the disappearances had no explanation and no wreckage has ever been left behind. When the TBF Avenger planes went missing, a massive search operation was conducted. Boats and planes searched the Bermuda Triangle for any signs of the aircraft. One of the boats searching was a PBM-5 Mariner airboat. The airboat took flight at 7.27 p.m. and called in a routine radio message three minutes later. Then, it was never heard from again. No trace was ever found of the rescue airboat or the five Avenger aircraft. A huge investigation was launched into the disappearance of all these vehicles, but nothing was ever discovered. The Bermuda Triangle is home to some pretty intense and unexpected weather. Storms build up quickly and unexpectedly, then disappear soon after. If you blink, you might miss it. This could explain why few distress signals are issued. Pilots and sailors never saw the weather coming. A popular theory suggests that rogue waves are responsible for the many disappearances. Rogue waves are called extreme storm waves by scientists. They occur when different weather patterns take place at the same time and cause large unexpected waves that reach up to 100 feet tall. Witnesses say that the waves look like giant walls of water. These waves could explain why ships go down fast and without leaving any trace. Just off the coast of Japan, you'll find the Bermuda Triangle of the Pacific Ocean. They call it the Devil's Triangle. Between 1950 and 1954, nine ships disappeared in this area without leaving a trace. The ship Kayo Maroon 5 was sent to investigate these unexplained disappearances when it also vanished. After this incident, the Japanese authorities labeled the area as a danger zone, and sailors were encouraged to avoid it. Some people blame all disasters on the extraterrestrial paranormal activity. Others suppose it's all about raging natural phenomena. Some scientists believe the cause of anomalies is the environmental changes. 
Also, there's a really high concentration of methane hydrates on the bottom of the ocean in the Pacific Bermuda area. This gas tends to set off, and when it happens, bubbles start forming on the surface of the water. These gas eruptions can interrupt the ability to float and can easily sink a ship. Because of this chemical reaction, there won't be even a trace left. Underwater volcanoes are said to be another possible explanation for the Japanese Dragon's Triangle. In fact, they can take down even small islands. Luckily, nobody lives there. It's a pretty common thing in this area that some of them disappear underwater and others appear out of the blue because of seismic activity. You'll never find the Dragon's Triangle on any official map of the world, so nobody's quite sure about how large it is in reality. In July 2015, two teenagers disappeared after setting sail off the coast of Florida. There's some mystery about what the two teens were really getting up to. They told their parents that they were just going to fish, but they told their friends that they were crossing to the Bahamas. Shortly after they left, a line of thunderstorms moved towards the area, and the boys were never heard from again. A massive search was conducted, but sadly, nothing was found. One year later, the pair's boat was found off the coast of Bermuda with a broken iPhone and some personal effects left inside. One of the most popular and bizarre theories trying to solve the Bermuda Triangle mystery comes from Charles Berlitz. He insists that the area is home to the lost city of Atlantis. The missing ships and planes and malfunctioning equipment, according to him, were all caused by rays of energy let out by the special energy crystals that power Atlantis. While this sounds silly, Berlitz's theory was convincing enough that over 20 million people bought his book worldwide. Previously, the compass wouldn't work well in the Bermuda Triangle since the lines of the two poles coincided here – true north and magnetic north. But if you fall into this line, your compass will behave strangely. But the magnetic north is constantly shifting, and now it's far beyond the triangle. No legend says pirates of the last centuries operate in the Bermuda Triangle or that the Flying Dutchman makes other ships disappear. A popular theory is that ships travel to the distant past or future through a time portal in the Bermuda Triangle. Fortunately, these are all myths. Just imagine hundreds of giant tentacles reaching out to a group of ships sailing through the Bermuda Triangle. In the past centuries, they could easily sink an entire fleet, since the ships were made of wood and were lighter. Squids wrapped decks with their strong tentacles, made holes in the ship's hulls with their sharp beaks toothy suction cups could break the masts and tear the sails. The water was filling the holes and slowly rising to the deck. The ship sank in a matter of minutes. Survivors reached the shore and told everyone about huge monsters. This is how the legends of the Kraken appeared. Fortunately, now people have sonars and equipment for monitoring the sea space. They say the main reason why this place is so enigmatic must be the magnetic fields that form this ominous triangle ocean floor is made of rocks containing a lot of magnetite. It's more like iron. Magnetic fields react to the high concentration of magnetite on the ocean floor, which may start a sort of conflict between the two. It can often lead to various weather anomalies and, as a result, navigation issues. And naturally, any changes in the ocean floor or the Earth's magnetic fields influence the Bermuda Triangle a lot. Magnetic fields tend to shift their position, so do tectonic plates and even the continents, even though we never notice it. The skies are usually very clear there, but back in 1883, some people witnessed abnormal things in the area. Some claim to have seen large blocks of ice falling from the skies, and the crew even managed to save one as hard proof. Seems like the Bermuda Triangle has an alternate not only on Earth, but even in space. Spacecraft usually don't disappear into thin air, though, like there's no air. This anomalous area is really large and stretches right above the South Atlantic. It occupies the area from Chile to Zimbabwe and sits right at the point where Van Allen radiation belts are the closest to the surface of our planet. The Earth has two such belts, which come in handy trapping the particles that shoot in from the sun. They do a great job protecting the Earth from radiation. The magnetic field there is lower, so it allows the Earth's radiation belt to come closer to the surface. 
Whenever a satellite passes by, it will be exposed to radiation which might lead to serious damage. So, no satellite can take pictures of it. The South Atlantic anomaly is part of the Earth where natural radiation just flows out of control. Still, there is little evidence that all these triangles are really dangerous. Many believe the Bermuda Triangle itself has been proven time and again to be nothing but a work of fiction. In fact, some shipwrecks, such as the Ellen Austin, gained popularity in the middle of the 20th century, while nobody even thought of drawing a triangle in the Bermuda area before that. The mystery was popularized by science fiction writers and became a common myth, while no serious research proved it any more dangerous than other parts of the world's ocean. So, the crew of the Ellen Austin back in 1881 weren't even aware of the Bermuda Triangle back then, let alone afraid of it. What do you think? Want to high-five a sea creature? Well, put your flipper, I mean hand up, for the Tasmanian red handfish. This fish doesn't swim like a fish. It walks. It uses its flipper-like hands to stroll around on the ocean floor. These bottom walkers are disturbed by swimmers and boats a lot. Some people even want to take them home as pets. I think it's better to just give them a wave and swim on by. The Vampire Squid Its species name is Vampirotuthis infernalis, which translates to Vampire Squid from Hell. Oh yes, this vampire squid means to terrify everyone with its name. Its dark red color, its spikes at the bottom, and the scary fact that it can basically turn itself inside out. The vampire squid loves putting on a good show, but it's as harmless as a kitten is to humans. It's as if Dracula scared the pants off you, but he didn't have blood-sucking fangs. The vampire squid feeds on food particles from plants and animal matter floating near the ocean's surface. Since they're not predators, they need good defensive strategies, and their vampiric look is designed to ward off large creatures who want to eat them. Turning themselves inside out is a defensive mechanism since the spiky areas in the inner skin are more intimidating. They also shoot out a substance that does not have color, but is packed with bioluminescent particles to distract predators. The Vaquita Going out on a boat off the coast of Mexico sounds like the perfect vacation. The sun, the blue water, the most endangered sea creature. Wait, what? The vaquita isn't dangerous, but don't expect it to stick around to say hello or sign any autographs. It's incredibly shy. This little cow, that's what it means in Spanish, is one tiny sea mammal. With those black markings around its eyes, it looks more like a sea panda to me. Seeing one should make you feel very special. They're on the brink of extinction, mostly because they get caught by accident in fishing nets. It's estimated that there's only 10 left in the wild. The Blue Dragon This little creature looks like something out of a kid's fantasy movie. It's called the Blue Glaucus, casually referred to as the Blue Dragon or Blue Angel. It can be found in many places, the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. It's kind of a mollusk and it only grows to be about an inch long. What you think is the back is actually the mollusk's bright underbelly. It regularly floats on its back so that its blue colors help it camouflage with the water's waves. The blue dragon isn't just pretty, it's also smart. It usually feasts on Portuguese man o wars, also known as Fisalia fisalis. The blue dragon stores their stinging cells for later use, in essence, stealing their defensive mechanisms. When the blue dragon is threatened, it releases those stinging cells it's stored, directing them at an enemy to sting them with more power than the Portuguese man o' war would have been capable of. As they can store a huge amount of stinging cells, they can be a threat to humans. So, if you find one, don't pick it up. It's best to admire it from a distance. The Barrel Eye Fish If you ever wanted to have Superman's X-ray vision, Looking at the barrel eye fish will make you feel like you gained that superpower at some point in your life without even realizing it. The barrel eye has a transparent head, so you can see how their eyes and brain look inside. This magnificent creature lives in the deep sea. This is the lowest level of the ocean, where strange creatures roam in near freezing temperatures and constant darkness. They're exposed to water's pressure that's almost 1,000 times that of the surface. If the idea of the deep sea sends a shiver down your spine, stay tuned to learn about another of its creatures later on. The barrel eye fish can be found in the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. 
You might be wondering, why oh why would a fish have a see-through head? And that would be a fair question. Since the species was discovered in 1939, it was believed that the fish's eyes were set to see straight ahead and couldn't move. So it was assumed that they had tunnel vision. Scientists Bruce Robinson and Kim Reisenbickler from the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute recently discovered that the fish can move its eyes vertically to see through the top of its translucent head, thus noticing if there are predators or prey nearby. The transparent head also allows more light to enter so they can detect prey better. It's believed that the barrel eye fish eats jellyfish and small fish species. If you dive in the ocean at night, you might be lucky enough to see how orange ball coralomorph blooms in the dark. But make sure to be quick because as soon as you turn on your flashlight to take a good look, it will retract its tubes back into itself. The Megalodon The whale shark isn't the biggest shark known to humans. If the entire shark species were a kingdom, the prehistoric Megalodon would be the ruler of the sea. Megalodon roamed the ocean a long time ago. Oh, about 15.9 to 2.6 million years back between the early Miocene and late Pliocene eras. While they've long been extinct, people are still amazed to learn about these gigantic sea beasts. Megalodon could reach anywhere between 45 feet to 60 feet in length with jaws more than 6 feet wide. A fossil of a tooth that once belonged to a Megalodon measured at 7 inches. Needless to say, I'm pretty stoked that these guys have long been extinct. But there's still some adventurers out there hoping to meet this monster one day. The Dumbo Octopus This adorable creature, or creepy creature, or however you want to see it, is officially called Grimpoteuthis. More casually, it's referred to as the Dumbo Octopus, named after the Disney character. Though Dumbo, the elephant, not the octopus, was teased for his big ears, it's highly unlikely that this adorable octopus gets teased by its water neighbors. They are the deepest living octopuses living in the deep sea, and you know how scary that place is. They're only about 8 inches tall and spend their days hovering just above the seafloor eating snails, worms, and other food they find in the current or near ocean vents. There are nearly 17 species of Dumbo octopus, and they all have differences in height, color, and body parts. If you can't get enough strange animals, you'll be glad to learn that the deep sea has barely been explored by humans. So, keep an eye out. There are bound to be more fascinating animals discovered in the deep in the future. The Sea Angel These creatures might look and sound pretty cute, but their diet is far from sunshine and lollipops. Their favorite food are sea butterflies. They lay mucus traps for them and wait in ambush. The Squat Anemone Shrimp This shrimp is tiny, only 0.5 inches. It's also known as a dancer shrimp because of its peculiar behavior. When agitated, it raises its bottom above its head and does a little dance. Divers also say it readily jumps on their hands and cleans them. The Coconut Crab This guy may look pretty creepy, especially when the sun goes down. Mature coconut crabs are around 3 feet in length. Their preferred foods are coconuts, but they can also hunt down lizards and even large birds. The Slender Snipe Eel Slender Snipe Eel is a slim and long creature that's still a mystery for marine scientists. It's 4 feet long and it has at least 750 bones in its spine, which is much more than any other animal in the world. The Sea Pen Sea Pen is 7 feet long and it has a lot of varieties, but most of them look indeed like a pen or a quill. The similarity is even more striking when the animal has a water-filled bulb that anchors it to the floor. The Persian Carpet Flatworm This creature looks indeed like a carpet, despite being very small by comparison. It's only 4 inches long, able to become both male and female. It doesn't really mate with other flatworms. Rather, it fights them for the right to bear posterity. The Flamingo Tongue Sea Snails Tourists love these extraordinary snails for their pretty colors thinking it's a shell, but in fact, the shell is quite dull and hidden underneath colorful soft tissues. They eat softer, toxic parts of corals and store their toxins to protect themselves. Think you know what lurks in the depths of the ocean? While nearly 95% of our oceans haven't been explored yet, it's hard not to let your imagination run wild. But thanks to brave explorers, deep-sea cameras, and awesome archaeologists, 
We do know about some pretty incredible sea creatures living in our waters today, and millions of years ago. From the 9-foot spider crab to the 60-foot prehistoric megalodon, these sea dwellers come in all shapes and sizes. But let's focus on sea creatures famous for their huge size. Can you guess which living species of whale is the largest? Well, it's not the orca, but that's a good guess. The orca is a toothed whale that can grow to anywhere from 23 feet to 32 feet, which is slightly smaller than a school bus. How about the narwhal? Nope, they're not the biggest either. These unicorns of the sea live mainly in Arctic waters and only grow 13 feet to 20 feet in length. And that's including their 9-foot tusk. Tired of guessing? Okay, I give in. The largest whale that still exists today is the blue whale. At a jaw-dropping 82 feet to 105 feet, the blue whale is not only the biggest whale we know of, but is currently the largest animal to have ever lived on Earth. Seriously. These animals are bigger than a T-Rex and even the prehistoric Megalodon. If you were to put a blue whale next to a school bus, it would look like it could swallow it. Think about that. According to National Geographic, a blue whale's tongue can weigh the same as an elephant. And their hearts can weigh as much as a car. That doesn't even sound possible. It's no wonder these giants need to eat about four tons of krill every day. While there aren't too many animals living today that can compete with the blue whale's epic proportions, there is an entirely different species that is a good contender. And it's not quite what you would expect. It's a jellyfish. No, I'm not talking about the little jellyfish that wash up on the shore and ruin a perfectly good day at the beach. I'm referring to the lion's mane jellyfish, the biggest jellyfish around. This invertebrate can grow up to 120 feet long. They also come in different gorgeous colors like red, purple, or even shades of orange. As if their length wasn't impressive, the lion's mane jellyfish boasts a whopping 8 sets of 70 to 150 tentacles. That means they can have up to 1,200 in total. And here's the giant oceanic manta ray, the largest type of ray in the world. Their wingspan can be longer than a bus. These guys can reach 30 feet in length. They also have the biggest brain compared to body size among all fish. Unlike their stingray cousins, mantas don't have venomous tails. And while the lion's mane jellyfish and the blue whale are yet to be beaten for the longest sea creature, there is one marine creature that can grow even larger in length. The Portuguese Physalia physalis, tentacles and all, can reach a length of 165 feet long. And that's according to mentalfloss.com. While this thing may look a lot like a jellyfish, it's actually known as a siphonophore, and there are hundreds and sometimes thousands of them that are genetically identical. Their long tentacles help the organism catch prey, and its sting is fatal to most animals, even humans in some cases. What's even creepier is that if one of the tentacles comes off the organism for whatever reason, it can float around the water for days before decomposing. Even if it's detached, this tentacle can still sting you. But don't go running out of the ocean just yet. Your chances of being hurt by a Portuguese Phasalia Phasalis sting are pretty slim. However, if you do get stung, the side effects aren't pretty, with welts, stomach cramps, an elevated heart rate, and an upset stomach. While you don't want to go anywhere near these long creatures, they sure are pretty to look at. Check out all those colors! The Shastasaurus is the biggest marine reptile that has ever existed. These predators lived during the late Triassic period, about 210 million years ago. These amazing giants could reach lengths of up to 69 feet and weighed more than 75 tons. This made the Shastasaurus as heavy as a blue whale. And if you could stand this creature up vertically, it'd be as tall as a seven-story building. Despite appearances, the Shastasaurus was actually pretty slim for its size. Its ribcage was only six feet across. You'd think that this big guy was chowing down on other dinosaurs, but that's not the case at all. This reptile survived on a diet that consisted of small fish and cephalopods, like octopuses and squids. 
The Alberto nectes is a bright representative of the Pleosaur family, meaning that this marine reptile had a small head on an incredibly long neck and large flipper-like limbs that helped it move through the water. These creatures occupied the seas around North America 76 to 70 million years ago. The length of this sea monster could reach 38 feet, with its neck taking up 23 feet of that length. Its neck was a true record breaker. It had a whopping 76 bones in it. No other animal known to humankind has had so many vertebrae in its neck. Scientists aren't sure why they needed such a lengthy neck. They might have used it to collect shellfish off the seabed. Or perhaps it helped them capture their main prey, fish and squids. This aquatic reptile also had gastroliths in its stomachs. Some of them were as big as 5.5 inches in diameter. The Tylosaurus belonged to the Mosasaur family. It dominated the shallow seas of North America about 85 to 80 million years ago. This was an enormous predator, with the biggest representatives reaching 45 feet in length. It had a narrow hydrodynamic body with a blunt, powerful head that the animal used to ram and stun its prey. Its body was equipped with agile flippers and a long tail decorated with a maneuverable fin. The Tylosaurus was a carnivore, and its diet included not only fish, turtles, and small sharks, but also other mosasaurs, pleosaurs, and flightless birds. Meet Ophthalmosaurus. This prehistoric reptile thrived during the late Jurassic period and lived in oceans all over the world. Ophthalmosaurus weighed somewhere around 6,000 pounds and grew to approximately 16 feet long, according to NewDinosaurs.com. That's about the same length as the beluga whale that exists today. It's too bad these guys went extinct before we had a chance to see them ourselves, as their cartoonish wide eyes and dolphin-like features are pretty darn cute. Of course, the ophthalmosaurus evolved over time to become ophthalmologists, or eye doctors that we know today. No, that's just a lie. Just testing you. The Mosasaurus is a truly gigantic predator that dominated the seas all over the world about 66 million years ago. According to fossil evidence, some specimens could be more than 50 feet in length. This fact makes the Mosasaurus the biggest marine carnivore of its time. One of the most terrifying things about this creature was its crocodile-like head, decorated with literally hundreds of razor-sharp teeth neatly organized in two rows on both jaws. The thing is that it was pretty challenging for the Mosasaurus to grab its prey in the water. That's why it had all these teeth, plus something special. Pterygoid teeth anchored to the bones on the roof of its mouth. This made hunting and holding onto its prey much easier. The Styxosaurus belonged to the Pleosaur family and lived during the late Cretaceous period, around 85 to 70 million years ago. Upon first glance at this dinosaur, you might mistake it for a sea snake, and it'd be an honest mistake. Styxosauruses were about 35 feet in length, but over 16 feet of that consisted just of their long snake-like neck. They had a comparatively small body and weighed approximately four tons. Their mouths were full of razor-sharp cone-shaped teeth that they used to catch fish. They didn't need to chew their prey, thanks to the 200 small stones called gastroliths in their bellies that probably aided in digestion. At the same time, some scientists believe that the Styxosaurus used these stones to sink to the ocean bottom in search of particular types of fish. Huh, looks kind of like Nessie to me. Superpowers? Believe it or not, some animals have them. From sticky tongues to changing colors, you're about to meet 13 amazing animals with some very special abilities. If you have ants in your pants or termites in the house, you'll wish you lived next door to this animal. The giant anteater lives up to its name. It's 6.5 feet long, from snout to tail. If it stood up on its hind legs, it would be taller than most people. Good thing it only eats insects. With a diet of ants and termites, it gobbles close to 35,000 of the little critters in a single day. To capture its meal, the anteater is equipped with a long, narrow tongue. About two feet long, it's made of small, backward-pointing spines and covered in sticky saliva. When it comes across an anthill, the anteater uses its massive claws to dig into the earth. 
As the ants go scrambling, it flicks out its tongue, up to 150 times per minute, and the ants stick to it. Slurp? Now, the giant anteater doesn't have teeth for biting and chewing. It's part of a group of animals known as edentate, which means lacking teeth. Instead, the giant anteater grinds its food against the roof of its mouth. A tongue like that would certainly make eating popcorn at the movies more interesting. Another animal with an amazing tongue is the alligator snapping turtle. No, its tongue is not long and sticky. Instead, it has a small, blood-filled addition that looks like a little pink worm. When the turtle gets hungry, it will lay perfectly still under the water. The only thing moving, that worm-like appendage. Any fish that swims in for a closer look quickly becomes dinner. This turtle is also very good at holding its breath. It can stay underwater for 50 minutes while waiting for a bite to eat. Most humans can only hold their breath for one to two minutes. Another amazing tongue? The penguin has a cool one. It doesn't have any taste buds and is covered in keratinized bristles instead. Yep, keratin is the same stuff that makes up our fingernails and hair. These spiky protrusions point backward into the throat, and the fish can only move in one direction, into the penguin's tummy. But one of the coolest tongues in the animal world belongs to the chameleon. Unlike the anteater, the chameleon can only eat one insect at a time. Its tongue ends in a sticky ball of muscle. It shoots the tongue out, and when it hits its prey, that muscle changes shape. It becomes a suction cup, helping grab the insect and pull it back into the chameleon's mouth. If you've ever tried to grab a fly, you know how hard it is. Those things are fast. The chameleon's tongue, then, needs to be even faster. And it is. It can theoretically travel 8,000 feet per second. There's no way an insect will see it coming and have time to escape. The chameleon has another special trick. It can change colors. It was once believed that the animal did it as a way to hide from enemies. It would change its color to blend into the background, nearly becoming invisible. But this isn't really the reason behind this special ability. As cold-blooded animals, chameleons can't regulate their body temperature like we do. They become darker in color as a way to absorb heat from the sun. And they turn lighter to reflect that heat to cool down. They also use this ability to communicate with other chameleons. One color might tell a rival to stay away. Another can be used to attract a partner. It's like their version of emojis. When it comes to color changing, though, the chameleon is no match for the cuttlefish. Related to the squid and octopus, these cute ocean creatures can change the color and texture of their skin. This means they can look like almost anything in their environment, from a random rock on the ocean floor to a piece of floating vegetation. They truly are the world's champions at hide-and-seek. This ability comes in super handy when trying to hide from dolphins, sharks, or seals that see cuttlefish as a delicious snack. An animal that relies on camouflage 24-7 is the walking stick, or stick insect. As its name suggests, it looks like a twig with legs. It can range in size from one inch to one foot long. And while it's hiding in the tree, looking like just another tiny branch, it can eat all it wants. As an herbivore, it's very happy munching on leaves. Just don't grab one by accident next time you play fetch with Fido. But there are some animals that do the exact opposite. Through time, they have evolved to actually stand out as a way to warn predators of potential danger. This often involves bright coloring and patterning and is called aposematism. An example of this is the monarch butterfly. When you see one, it's easy to marvel at its beautiful orange coloring and the pattern on its wings. But with such a bright appearance, surely it makes it easy for predators to find. Actually, the bright color is a warning that eating a monarch can be a bad idea. Because of their diet in the larval stage, monarchs are very poisonous. Any animal that eats one will become quite ill and will never risk doing it again. The white and black stripes of a skunk are there for the same reason. It lets other animals know that if you mess with the skunk, you're in for a nasty surprise. Skunks have two glands in their rear that can emit a noxious spray called theol. It smells like rotten eggs. The animal can actually aim its spray, making its defense a powerful one. And they can spray six times in a row. After that, they'll be defenseless for 10 to 14 days while their glands develop more of that wonderful perfume, 
Oh, de skunk. And once you've been sprayed, it's very difficult to get it off, even with a shower. So, when you see a skunk in the wild, make sure to give it plenty of room to do its own thing. Like the skunk, the porcupine gives you 30,000 very good reasons to leave it alone. It's covered in many sharp quills, and because of the nearly 800 barbs near the tip of each one, these quills are difficult to remove if you get one stuck in your skin. Luckily, one common belief about porcupines is wrong. They cannot shoot those quills through the air. You have to touch one before it can come off. There are animals even underwater that have special powers for defense. The electric eel has a very shocking ability, though you've probably already guessed what it is. It has organs in its body that can release a powerful electric charge of up to 800 volts, which is higher than the voltage in an electrical outlet. The creature uses this to stun smaller animals or zap its enemies. It can also create electric pulses to communicate, sending out a form of Morse code to other eels. Instead of an electric charge, archer fish use spit to capture their next dinner. When you first see one, you wouldn't think it was at all special. It looks like any other fish. Yawn. But wait, because it really does have a superpower. Archer fish feed on insects. Insects, however, don't live in the water. This makes it difficult for the archer fish to eat. So what does this little critter do? Relying on the special design of its mouth and its great eyesight, it spits out a powerful stream of water. This knocks an unsuspecting insect over. It falls into the water and the archer fish pounces. The stream is so precise that it can hit an insect up to five feet away. A creature with a similar but much more disgusting ability is the horned lizard. It can flood the sinus area near the eye with blood. Then, when it feels threatened, it will squirt that blood out of its eye socket. This can travel as far as four feet. This is enough to startle an enemy, giving the lizard time to escape. It will also use this special skill to remove dirt and dust that gets into its eye. And finally, the one animal you'll probably never meet in your lifetime, even though they live all over the planet, is the tardigrade. Also known as water bears or moss piglets, these are microscopic eight-legged animals that have even gone to outer space and survived. They're pretty much indestructible and have been found in the deep sea and the frozen wasteland of Antarctica. In order to survive in the harshest conditions, they will transform into dehydrated balls called tons. And in this form, they have been known to survive at temperatures as low as minus 328 degrees Fahrenheit and as high as 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Those are all some pretty amazing powers. Well, except for the blood shooting from the eye. That's just gross. You travel along the coast of the North Atlantic. In your Jeep, you're driving through the jungles and plains, taking amazing pictures of wildlife for your blog. And then you accidentally come upon a place that isn't marked on any map. It's a bay with an azure coast. No human has ever set foot here. You've discovered a huge footprint of an unknown creature on the sandy beach. The size of the print is more than half of your vehicle. Suddenly, out of the tropical forest that borders with the beach, you hear a deafening roar. Palm trees crack and break as an unknown monster comes out of the jungle. To understand what it is, let's go back to the past. Hundreds of millions of years ago, shortly before the huge meteorite hit the Earth, a group of tyrannosaurs migrated to the coast of the North Atlantic. There, they got to a huge bay facing the ocean. For a long time, thanks to the natural protection of this place, they were safe from all natural disasters that had been occurring to the Earth at that time. The fall of a meteorite, the Ice Age, and earthquakes didn't bother the T-Rex as much. But they weren't the only monsters in this place. A group of megalodons swam to the bay for safety too. The most ferocious creatures of the oceans and of land were forced to live in one place. For millions of years, these monsters cooked in a huge cauldron called evolution. As a result, a new creature of destructive power appeared. The new hybrid beast has the very best of two ancient titans. Tyrannosaurus Rex, with the length of 40 feet and weighing about 9 tons, it's roughly the size of a school bus. The king of dinosaurs had thick and strong neck muscles that could hold a large skull and jaws filled with 60 sharp teeth. 
and the thick tail of the T-Rex helped to balance the body. The bite force of the giant dino reached 12,800 pounds, which is as if an adult elephant sat on you. Strong enough, but it's nothing compared to the strength and size of the Megalodon. The shark reached 50 feet in length, slightly less than a subway car, and weighed 75 tons, which is more than a tank. This is almost eight times heavier than a T-Rex. The Megalodon's jaws were filled with 300 sharp teeth, each the size of an adult human palm. And the bite force of a Megalodon is six times stronger than the T-Rex's. And here, these two beasts become one, inheriting strong Megalodon jaws, 360 teeth, and a massive Tyrannosaurus skull. The hybrid monster moves on two legs, but has fins on its back and the tip of its tail, as well as webbed toes. Its length from the tail to the skull is 70 feet, and its weight is about 90 tons. This is the largest creature in the entire history of the planet. After a blue whale, of course. Since it survived all natural disasters and had no competitors in the food chain, it's been able to live to this day. And here you see the Megalodon Rex, or Tyrannolodon, eh, however you want. Its roar deafens you. The monster is coming at you. Every step feels like a little earthquake. You press the gas pedal, but the car doesn't go. The wheels are stuck in the sand. There's no choice. You leave the car and take an inflatable boat with a small motor from the trunk. At this moment, the Tyrannolodon grabs the Jeep with its jaws and crushes it like a cardboard box. The pressure comparable to the weight of six adult elephants is now being applied to your Jeep. The monster chews it like so much chewing gum. You can hear its sharp teeth cutting through the metal and rubber on the wheels. And then the dinosaur spits the car out. Meanwhile, you run to the water, start the engine, and sail away on the boat as far as possible. The dinosaur runs after you and jumps into the ocean. It swims like a shark. You can see a fin sticking out of the water the size of a small sailing boat. Fortunately, the monster isn't able to catch up with you. The megalodon's speed is about 10 miles per hour, but now it slows down almost twice as much because it has massive hind legs. The webbing on the legs helps to swim, but it's still a big weight. The physical form of the dinosaur doesn't allow it to accelerate too much. Eight miles per hour is its maximum. The fin is moving further and further away from you. But at this moment, the engine starts to rattle. Oh no, you remember you didn't fill the tank with fuel. This means that in a couple of minutes, you will be left alone with a huge predator. It won't see you since you've sailed far away. But the shark part of our monster has a great sense of smell in the water. You won't be able to escape its nose. You turn the boat and head for the shore. In the distance, the triangular fin is swimming around. You give it a wide berth to avoid being caught by Tyrannolodon. But you don't have enough gas. The engine shuts off. You start rowing with an oar, but now you're moving too slow. The monster is inevitably catching up with you. A huge dinosaur emerges from the water and falls back, creating a huge wave. It throws you to the shore along with the boat. The monster comes out of the water and runs after you. You have a chance to save yourself because the speed of the Tyrannolodon is about 10 miles per hour, which is slightly slower than the speed of the T-Rex. You run and easily find a shelter. But you realize in time, this is a bad tactic, since the T-Rex part of the monster has well-developed smell receptors. It can sniff you out as well as a domestic cat. You just need to run as far as possible from this beast. You can hear the deafening roar of the Megalodon Rex behind you. Trees are breaking, the ground is shaking, but then it's suddenly all quiet. The Tyrannolodon's heart does hard work when it pumps blood through the huge dinosaur's body. When it runs, the heart works even more intensively. Because of this load, the dinosaur has little endurance. It quickly runs out of energy. Perhaps it's sitting on the ground right now and catching its breath. Tired, you also stop. You can't hear the dinosaur's footsteps. The T-Rex couldn't hunt small dinosaurs, as they easily ran away from it. And its approach was heard from afar. Only big plant-eating dinosaurs, as slow as itself, could become its dinner. It's the 21st century now, and the dinosaurs are extinct. So what does this monster eat? 
At this moment, you can hear the trees crunching a few feet away from you. Through the bushes and leaves, you can see a large triangular plate. You run to the side and realize that this is a real stegosaurus. It seems the Jurassic period is still preserved on this piece of land. The herbivorous dinosaur, the size of a bus, calmly eats grass and makes noise. On the other side, you hear the heavy footsteps of the hungry Tyrannolodon. The Stegosaurus senses the upcoming enemy. It gets into a fighting position. Tyrannolodon is approaching. You run back to a safe place and watch the fight. Tyrannolodon runs out of the jungle. It growls, opens its massive jaw, and attacks the herbivore. The Stegosaurus quickly hits the enemy with its barbed tail. The Tyrannolodon falls to the side. Trees shatter into splinters, and the ground shakes under the huge monster. It gets up and furiously runs at the opponent. You decide to run away to buy yourself some time. You come to the shore, jump on the boat, and row as far as possible from the bay. The roars of two giant dinosaurs come from the jungle. You decide to sail along the bay and get to the beach with civilization. While you're sailing, you notice that it's suddenly become quiet. Too quiet. Waves appear on the surface, but there's no wind. The water bubbles, and you hear a terrible hum from the ocean depths. Through the blue surface, you can see several tentacles. They're huge, and they're on your every side. This must be a huge squid, or even a kraken. But then, you see the head of this monster is a shark's one. Now you definitely can't escape, because the Crackalodon swims out of the water. But this is a completely different story. The Megalodon was the biggest shark to ever live. Not only that, it's one of the biggest fish and the largest predator in Earth's history. Over three times longer than the biggest great white shark on record, the females have also been found to be twice the size of the males. The Megalodon could swallow a small car without even touching its teeth, if cars had been around then. In fact, the Meg was so big and powerful that it had no natural predators. It was the uncrowned king of the seas, swimming freely from ocean to ocean. This cosmopolitan creature was found all over the world from America to Europe and Australia and Japan, assuming there were countries back then. Meg fossils have been found on every continent except Antarctica. Everybody skips Antarctica. Science tells us that the Megalodon went extinct over 3.6 million years ago. But could they still be alive at the deepest depths of the ocean? The fearsome name, Megalodon, comes from two Greek words. Megas, meaning big, and odont, meaning tooth. Combined, they mean big tooth. And it certainly lived up to its name. Just one of its chompers is the same size as a human head. It had 276 humongous teeth in total, across five terrifying rows. In all of history, only a couple of saber-toothed cats and the T-Rex had consistently bigger teeth. Now that's a showdown I'd like to watch. The Megalodon vanished millions of years ago, leaving only huge teeth to be found by modern archaeologists. Only around 80% of the ocean has been explored, so who knows what's lurking at the bottom. If you did manage to make it down, it's unlikely that you'll run into Meg, though. The sharks, like us, preferred warm coastal waters. Deep ocean living would be too cold for the beasts, and food would be scarce. Their entire bodies would also have to evolve to avoid being squished by the enormous water pressure down there. It's unlikely that they're still around, but not impossible. Now, about the appearance of the Megalodon. Scientists believe it didn't look like a great white shark. The Megalodon belongs to a different fish family, and most likely looked like a giant sand tiger shark. Flattened snout, small eyes, its dorsal fin moved backward. The sand shark has two dorsal fins about the same size. The coloration is light brown with a white belly. It may have had brown red spots like a sand shark all over its body. We used to think of the megalodon as something scary from the first finds of its fossils. That was back in the Renaissance era. People found some teeth in the rocks. At first, these teeth were thought to be the tongues of dragons or snakes. And here is the first drawing of what the owner of these teeth supposedly looked like. A massive snout with a scary nose and a bunch of razor-sharp teeth. 
The megalodon is usually described as a sort of giant great white shark, but this is just a common myth. In fact, the ancestors of today's great white existed at the same time as the meg. But they weren't the best buddies and were even in competition with each other. The great white shark was a better hunter, using its smaller size and agility to snap up Meg's prey quickly. They were also known to eat Meg pups, who were only half their size. This didn't help the whole extinction thing. We also have evidence that megalodons were brutal hunters, kings of the food chain. The first combat tool in their arsenal was the battering ram. The megalodon would take its prey by surprise. It had only one chance to hit it. If it missed, it would take too long for a second round. The maneuverability of the megalodon was comparable to a large truck. While a great white was no match for an adult meg in a head-to-head -head fight, they sure weren't scared of stealing their food. This only left the bigger fish and whales for the meg. But its food supplies began to run out as the whales swam to the cooler new seas. The whales adapted to prefer the colder temperatures, leaving our friend the Meg behind. The Megalodons either starved or were frozen into extinction by the Ice Age. Rather than a Great White, the Megalodon is more like a modern bull shark. It had a short snout, a flat lower jaw, and huge pectoral fins to support its massive weight and size. As scary as they are, these sharks were actually caring family guys. Several megalodon nursery areas have been discovered in Florida, Maryland, and Panama. They gave birth to their young in shallow water environments. We know this from discovering loads of tiny megalodon teeth found in these areas. I wonder if they had nannies too. But how come there are so many megalodon teeth out there for us to analyze? Due to their messy, aggressive eating habits, sharks regularly lose their teeth. They lose a set of teeth every one to two weeks. That's 40,000 teeth in a lifetime. They must rake in a fortune from the tooth fairy. Because of this, their teeth were continually raining down to the ocean floor. Luckily for us, they're also the hardest part of the shark skeleton, which is why so many teeth have survived and become fossilized. It's fair to say the first discoveries of the Meg's teeth confused people. Early discoverers thought that the Meg's teeth were petrified tongues of ancient serpent creatures. They even used to call them tongue stones. It's also a common myth that the Megalodon was around at the same time as the dinosaurs, although this would have been pretty cool. The dinosaurs were wiped out around 66 million years ago, but the Megalodons came much later. The oldest Meg fossil is only around 23 million years old, but it's tricky to pinpoint the exact date. After all, calendars weren't invented yet. They became extinct way before humans even evolved. The earliest Homo sapiens, which is a fancy name for the first humans, emerged about 2.5 million years ago. But what if the megalodon shark didn't go extinct? Whale populations have dropped drastically since these guys were last around, so there'd be way fewer whales for them to chomp down on. Whales have also gotten a lot smarter and learned new defensive moves, making them way harder to take down. It's estimated that they ate around 12 tons of food each day. The Kraken is a colossal squid, a legendary sea monster, the biggest hunk of calamari you ever saw. And if this monster had existed, the world would have changed beyond recognition. The Kraken has powerful tentacles, solid muscles with suckers at the end. They're impossible to escape. The Kraken can break a ship in half, or just pull it down into the depths. But the worst thing about the Kraken is its size. According to old sailor's stories, its size is almost 10 soccer fields. Hey, maybe the Kraken could play soccer! The Kraken legends said the monster was so giant that sailors mistook it for a small island. In past centuries, it would have been impossible to defeat such a beast. If the Kraken existed in reality, it might have had offspring. Yeah. In all the world's oceans, there would be giant monsters that could sink any ship. It's unlikely that the Kraken would have competitors in its habitat, so its population would grow strongly. Since the Kraken is enormous, it would need a lot of food, so the population of other large sea animals would fall significantly. Blue whales, great white sharks, other giant squids, all the big sea creatures would be endangered. 
The kraken belongs to the cephalopod genus. This species includes squid and octopus, some of the most intelligent creatures on the planet. The kraken is a skilled hunter and will never fight in the open. Colossal squids live in deep waters and they have the largest eyes among all animals. The squid's eye is the size of a dinner plate. Thanks to this, they can see their prey from far away. Similarly, a kraken would spot the ship much sooner than sonar could pick up the kraken. It would always have the drop on you. Well, that's not good. In 1857, a squid beak was discovered on the coast of Denmark. Other huge squid remains were found in the Bahamas, and then scientists were convinced that gigantic squids existed. While colossal squid have been officially discovered since then, it's been more than a hundred years and we still don't know what the max size they can grow to. The fact is, colossal squids are one of the most elusive creatures on Earth. They live in the depths of the ocean where it's challenging for scientists to reach. Any dive to a greater depth requires powerful, bulky equipment. Underwater bathyscaphs and cameras make a lot of noise and light, which squids notice from afar. They flee before we can see them. It's difficult to say if these huge squids were the size of a small island, but the truth is, we've only studied about 5% of the ocean. It may be that in its depths, monsters much more terrible than the kraken swim. Within the ocean waters, somewhere in the southern hemisphere, a ghostly black shadow looms deep down in the depths. Suspiciously swimming far below, the Megalodon is hunting for its next meal. With the appearance of a great white shark, but three times the size of the largest ever recorded, its intimidating design has evolved over millions of years, creating the ultimate natural predator. For millions of years, the intimidating evolutionary traits have gone unchecked and unopposed. With its keen senses, it detects its prey within three miles. As it swims below, it's been following an unsuspecting sea turtle that's slowly paddling above on a long voyage. The megalodon stalks the turtle, ensuring it makes its move toward the turtle at the right moment swimming upward at 11 miles per hour, intending to immobilize the turtle by ramming it. As it approaches, the megalodon's adept senses notice something else lurking nearby. Pausing its pursuit of the turtle, it adjusts and turns to face another, much larger object. The megalodon may be the largest marine predator to have ever lived on Earth, rightfully feared by all creatures within these waters, but not today. There is a newcomer to these parts, one that has a similar reputation and matches the megalodon in ferocity. This unknown creature intends to contest these hunting grounds. The challenger is the Leviathan. As the sea turtle takes this opportunity to swim away as fast as it's able, these two apex predators size each other up from a distance, preparing to establish who will reign as the supreme king of the sea. The Megalodon dominated the ocean sometime between 3 to 23 million years ago, spreading to all corners of the globe, within seas surrounding Europe, Africa, the Americas, and Australia. Its focus is mainly on offshore areas where prey would be prominent, hunting sea turtles, whales, seals, dolphins, and other sharks. Its range was long, traveling between coastal and oceanic waters throughout different stages of its life cycle. Given that the territory they cover grows with each year they live and the wide range of prey available to them, the megalodon's size can reach up to 67 feet in length. Armed with thick and robust teeth made for grabbing their prey and biting through bone, they have a 41,000 pound bite force, which is almost four times stronger than that of a T-Rex. Their tactics include ambushing their prey from below while ramming them into submission. With larger prey, they aim to disable them by biting at the fins and, once immobilized, biting through their chest. Their jaw is made up of around 276 frightening serrated edge teeth that are 7 inches long and jagged at the sides. The megalodon's competitor, the leviathan, is armed with 22 large teeth of its own that come in various sizes, some up to 12 inches long. All are capable of piercing through its target 
excluding tusks in comparison, these are among the largest teeth that have ever existed on any known animal. Although it hasn't reached an overall equivalent size to the megalodon, its length is equally impressive, as it's capable of growing as large as 57 feet long. Mainly living within the southern hemisphere, they've only been around for a short while, existing from 9 to 10 million years ago. Although it hunts similar prey to the megalodon, it has a different strategic method of hunting, chasing its prey, tiring it out to the point of exhaustion, and then finishing it off by ramming it with its head and then biting it. It also has a more adaptive trait in its arsenal, its much larger brain. Being a warm-blooded mammal, it possesses superior intelligence, ensuring quicker thinking with the ability to change its tactics at crucial moments. The megalodon acts on sheer instinct, and that has worked consistently for the past few million years. But will it work now? Although there are millions of years of difference between when these two behemoths existed and patrolled the seas, they shared a short period of time in history. But when they did overlap one another's territory, they created some of the most epic conflicts that have ever been had on Earth. This megalodon's turf has never been in contention until now. As the Leviathan approaches, observing the much larger megalodon, it's hesitant to make the first move, as generally, Anything that it has come across before attempts to escape immediately, causing a chase to begin. The Megalodon, however, never flees. The Megalodon's instincts ensure it will act overconfident, and, as expected, it makes the first move. It swims at full speed, gliding through the water, aiming to ram the Leviathan. The Leviathan has no other choice but to do the same, rather than turning to flee and leaving itself unprotected. The two aquatic giants slice through the water on their way to meet fin to fin. The megalodon is puzzled that its foe is not turning tail to swim away. But it continues, as it has no reason to doubt victory from this tried and true tactic that has never failed before. As the megalodon approaches, it quickly turns to swim downward. It's faster and more agile than its opponent. It maneuvers below, gaining some distance. The Leviathan moves much slower and is unable to turn in time as the Megalodon veers upward and rams it on its soft underbelly, attempting to force it into submission. There is little effect due to its size, and the Leviathan continues to turn, but it's far too slow as it attempts to bite with a desperate hope to grasp its attacker with its powerful jaws. The Megalodon easily swims away from its toothy trap quickly retaliating by taking aim at the tail and fins, chipping away at little pieces as it bites, then quickly retreats, continuing this routine over and over, trying to disable the Leviathan's defenses. This tactic is effective, but it's taxing on the Megalodon as it's running out of energy. Still, it pushes hard to try and finish the hunt, using all the energy at its disposal, expecting that the struggle will not go on much longer. The Leviathan is outmatched, the speed of its combatant is far superior, and the constant chipping away at the fins and tail is becoming too costly. Upon realizing its abilities are surpassed and that it's helpless to resist the constant array of attacks, it attempts to swim away, maneuvering as it flees, desperately trying to obtain some distance from its aggressor. The Megalodon follows the Leviathan during its attempted escape, realizing this is a prime opportunity to finish the job. The Leviathan swipes its large tail as it swims, trying to repel any further attacks from the Megalodon. It hits the Megalodon and stops it in its path with every advance. As the Leviathan continues to swim away, it sustains energy with ease. The Megalodon, on the other hand, is quickly running out. The Leviathan's strategy is working as it continues to swim at a relaxed pace. The Megalodon eventually runs out of energy, unable to continue at the same pace. But its instinctual arrogance won't let go. In its evolution, it has never really needed to develop the ability to flee. There has never been a reason for it. Over millions of years, it's never been outmatched. But that is all changing now. As they press on, it's clear that this is a contest between a marathon swimmer and a sprinter. The Leviathan continues to conserve its energy wisely, while the Megalodon, starved of energy, continues to pursue, becoming slower with every flick of its tail, to the point that it's unable to maintain the chase. 
Upon realizing its foe is exhausted, the Leviathan turns toward the Megalodon. Now, with dominant speed and maneuverability, it spreads its massive jaws, grasping the Megalodon's spine, ending the struggle and ensuring its victory. The Challenger, the Leviathan, is a novice in comparison to the ancient Megalodon, but thanks to evolution, it ensured its eventual victory. This guaranteed its reign as the top predator, and arguably, the greatest predator to have existed on Earth. Unfortunately, it would only be a short reign. No, there wouldn't be a larger or more superior foe to take the mantle. The world would begin to change. The Earth would soon go through a cooling trend, which would cause the main prey of the Leviathan to go extinct. And without a food source to sustain this hulking beast, it was unable to continue. But this led to other similar predatory animals taking its place. The killer whale, sharing similar characteristics, eventually replaced its predecessor. The Megalodon would then retake the mantle by default due to the absence of its victor. Continuing with its prior successful strategy and broader food source, it ensured its prolonged survival. But as the seas cooled even further and became much shallower worldwide, it became more difficult for the Megalodon to reproduce. The suitable, shallow areas that were necessary for nurseries quickly disappeared. And without these, the Megalodon too eventually went extinct. And just like its former opponent, other smaller sharks were able to adapt to these changes in the shallower waters, ensuring a more diverse pool of predators to dominate the seas. The giant shark that terrorized the oceans some 20 million years ago. For 13 million years, this 60-ton beast dominated the warm waters of our planet. Though, some believe that the Meg still lives in the most remote and deepest parts of the ocean. It's a hot summer day. It seems only logical to go for a swim in the sea. You're floating on your back, completely relaxed. Your eyes are closed. Your breath is even. Waters pleasantly cool around your body. A light breeze touches your face. You feel calm enough to doze off. Suddenly, something bumps into your leg. Yanked out of your half slumber, you begin to flail until you're face to face with the invisible danger. Luckily, all you spot is a couple of easily recognizable fins and cute smiley snouts. Phew, just dolphins. Guess you're lucky to meet them in the wild. These amazing creatures are so close, you can touch them. You've heard people say dolphins' skin feels rubbery, but to your mind, it's more like the inner part of a hard-boiled egg. One of the animals is so close to you that its salty smell fills your nostrils. You know, though, that dolphins don't have sweat glands. It means they don't sweat and are pretty much odorless. The smell you sense comes from the water they swim in. The largest and most ferocious predator to ever haunt the oceans, the Megalodon shark dominated the seas for centuries before coming extinct millions of years ago. However, scientists managed to discover very few remnants of the giant shark. Everything we know about the great beast we've learned thanks to fossils of its giant teeth, which are just about the size of the average human hand. A megalodon skeleton has never been discovered. Shark skeletons are made mostly of cartilage, meaning that they decompose quickly. Luckily, sharks continuously shed and regrow teeth throughout their lives. One shark can go through 40,000 teeth in a single lifetime. Scientists have managed to study different types of shark species based on their teeth alone. The megalodon shark had around 276 teeth. When they fell out, those teeth landed in the seabed where they stayed for millions of years, fossilizing. Scientists found those teeth, and they're the only real record we have of the megalodon's existence. Megalodon teeth have been discovered all over the world. It means that unlike other marine animals of its time, the megalodon was intercontinental. Even today, most sharks and marine animals tend to stick to one sea or ocean. The megalodon shark swam freely around the world, moving between tropical and subtropical waters. Megalodon teeth have been found in every continent apart from the freezing cold waters of Antarctica. When a megalodon makes a starring appearance in a movie or TV show, it's portrayed to look like a giant version of a great white shark. Scientists previously believed that the megalodon and the great white shark both descended from one common ancestor. Still, it's not true. In fact, it's more likely that the megalodon was the arch enemy of the great white shark's ancestor, the broad-tooth mako shark. That means megalodon wouldn't have looked so similar to the great white after all. In reality, 
the Megalodon would have a shorter nose than the Great White, along with longer pectoral fins to give the giant shark a stockier and more threatening build. They both had an excellent sense of smell though, so even in prehistoric times, it wasn't a good idea to go swimming with a chunk of raw meat in hand. And it certainly isn't safe now. Whether the Meg's hiding somewhere in the depths, which some still believe is true, or it's gone forever, younger cousins will still be there waiting. Also, both of them like to go after big marine mammals, so they would certainly have things to do together. That is, until the Meg got moody and accidentally ate its friend. Eh, you never know. These guys had a different hunting style. Great whites prefer to dive straight towards their prey and find its softest spot, like exposed legs or underbelly. Sometimes, an entire tooth would be found embedded in a bone of some bigger animal, such as a whale. Without the main parts they use for swimming, poor sea animals were then helpless and unable to escape. Yet whales were just a smaller part of Megalodon's diet. Seals, sea cows, squids, dolphins, other sharks, the good old Meg probably wouldn't say no to some random school of smaller fish swimming into its mouth either. Nothing better than a good snack after a big tasty dinner. Even those giant turtles weren't safe with their thick shells. The Meg probably took them as a dare challenge on a daily basis. Scientists have used computer simulations to try and work out the hunting style of the ancient shark. Using this technology, scientists have discovered that the Megalodon's attack style was very different from that of modern-day sharks. Modern sharks dive straight for their prey's most vulnerable spot, for example, the soft underbelly of a seal. The megalodon's teeth were uniquely suited to biting through tougher areas of cartilage. So, evidence suggests that a megalodon would first chew the tougher fins of their prey, rendering them unable to swim away before launching into their final attack. Some people believe that the Megalodon is still alive today, lurking at the depths of the ocean's waters. But it's unlikely to be true. Megalodons are a warm water species, which means they would be unable to survive in the cold waters of the deep ocean. Most of the Megalodon's potential prey live in shallower waters, meaning there would be very little for the Megalodon to eat at deep sea level. Simply put, if there was an animal as big as the Megalodon still living today, we would have spotted it by now. It is unlikely that you'll run into a Meg, though. The sharks, like us, preferred warm coastal waters. Deep ocean living would be too cold for the beasts, and food would be scarce. Their entire bodies would also have to evolve to avoid being squished by the enormous water pressure down there. It's unlikely they're still around, but not impossible. Some good news if you do run into one is that the shark is pretty unlikely to eat you. You are way too small a meal for the Megalodon, even if you have a couple of friends with you. This guy eats whales that are over 50 feet long. If you're having a beach party, though, it's a different story. In a beach full of swimmers, the shark very well might creep up, scooping several humans into its giant mouth without even chewing. The fearsome name Megalodon comes from two Greek words, megas, meaning big, and odont, meaning tooth. Combined, they mean big tooth, and it certainly lives up to its name. Just one of its chompers is the same size as a human head. It had 276 humongous teeth in total, across five terrifying rows. In all of history, only a couple of saber-toothed cats and the T-Rex had consistently bigger teeth. Now that's a showdown I'd like to watch. The Megalodon vanished millions of years ago, leaving only huge teeth to be found by modern archaeologists. They literally disappeared with very few traces left. Scientists believe that over time, deep sea levels dropped and the ocean's temperature went down rapidly. Over a third of all marine life was wiped out as the oceans cooled and the number of animals at the bottom of the food chain plummeted. This had a catastrophic effect on the hungry predators at the top. Sorry guys. It became way too cold for these sun-loving sharks too, which made it difficult for them to reproduce since they gave birth in warm waters. The Megalodon is usually described as a sort of great white shark, but this is just a common myth. In fact, the ancestors of today's great white existed at the same time as the Meg, but they weren't best buddies and were even in competition with each other. The great white shark was a better hunter using its smaller size and agility to snap up the Meg's prey quickly. They were also known to eat Meg pups, who were only half their size. This didn't exactly help the whole extinction thing. While a great white was no match for an adult Meg in a head-to-head -head fight, they sure weren't scared of stealing their food. 
this only left the bigger fish and whales for the Meg. But its food supplies began to run out as whales swam to the cooler new seas. The whales adapted to prefer the colder temperatures, leaving our friend the Meg behind. The Megalodons either starved or were frozen into extinction by the Ice Age. Rather than a great white, the Megalodon is more like a modern bull shark. It had a short snout, a flat lower jaw, and huge pectoral fins to support its massive weight and size. As scary as they are, these sharks were actually caring family guys. Several Megalodon nursery areas have been discovered in Florida, Maryland, and Panama. They gave birth to their young in shallow water environments. We know this from discovering loads of tiny Megalodon teeth found in these areas. I wonder if they had nannies too. The water is bubbling under the fishing boat as if something is coming up out of the water. It gets closer and closer. The water seems to boil. Suddenly, you see giant jaws and glistening teeth. Seconds later, a huge shark jumps out of the water and crushes the boat in one butt. It was the Megalodon, the largest fish that ever existed on Earth. Now, we pictured the Megalodon as this, an enlarged version of the white shark for a long time. But scientists continue to argue about its appearance. So far, they agree that the image of this giant shark was wrong. Here's the data that scientists are sure of. Size, about 50 feet long. That's as big as a school bus and comparable to the length of a subway car. 8.5 times the height of an average person. Let's compare it to the modern white shark. The megalodon is three times bigger, but that's just a rough estimate. We don't have a fully preserved skeleton of the megalodon. That's because it didn't have any bones but cartilage. Not much of that left in the 3.6 million years since the megalodons went extinct. All that survived were teeth and a few vertebrae. By comparison, dinosaurs went extinct about 66 million years ago. But their solid bones are perfectly preserved, and we have many different examples of their skeletons. Scientists have calculated the size of a megalodon based on its teeth and jaw. Now, this is one tooth. It's about 7 inches long, bigger than the palm of your hand, and three times the size of a modern white shark's teeth. The megalodon jaw was 6 feet wide and chalked up 5 rows of teeth, a total of 276 razor-sharp chompers. The other preserved remains are the vertebral column. It consists of 150 vertebrae, each 6 inches wide. They contain much calcium because, well, Megalodon love fresh cold milk. Nah, <laughs> it's because the vertebrae had to withstand the enormous mass of a giant shark. Based on those fossils, scientists created a model and calculated only the approximate size of the Megalodon. But it could hardly have been any bigger. It's all about breathing. The bigger the fish, the more oxygen it needs. Which means a larger gill area. That's the organ that filters the water and collects oxygen. If the megalodon were any larger, it would have trouble breathing. So, scientists believe that 50 feet is the maximum size of an individual. On average, they were a few feet smaller. Now, let's talk weight. On average, one megalodon weighed about 30 to 35 tons. By comparison, a white shark weighs one ton, which is 30 times less. Hey, trust me. A school bus is four times lighter at seven and a half tons. The weight of a megalodon can be compared to an empty Boeing 737. But the modern blue whale beats the megalodon in size and weight. 98 feet long versus 50, almost twice as long. Blue whale's weight is about 180 tons. That's like six megalodons or six passenger planes, or like 33 adult elephants. Hey, don't you love the comparisons? Now, about the appearance of the megalodon. Scientists believe it didn't look like a white shark. The megalodon belongs to a different fish family and most likely looked like a giant sand tiger shark. Flattened snout, small eyes. Its dorsal fin is moved backwards. The sand shark has two dorsal fins about the same size. The coloration is light brown with a white belly and may have had brown-red spots like a sand shark all over its body. We used to think of the megalodon as something scary from the first finds of its fossils. That was back in the Renaissance era. People found some teeth in the rocks. At first, these teeth were thought to be the tongues of dragons or snakes. And here's the first drawing of what the owner of these teeth supposedly looked like. A massive snout with a scary nose and a bunch of razor-sharp teeth. We also have the evidence that megalodons were brutal hunters, kings of the food chain. 
The first combat tool in their arsenal was the battering ram. The megalodon was a slow swimmer, though. It could only accelerate up to 11 miles per hour. In comparison, the modern white shark can reach 35 miles per hour in a dash for its meal. The fastest human swimmer could only go 6 miles per hour. Well, good luck with that. But the megalodon had incredible mass. Though slow, its battering ram had tremendous power. The megalodon would take its prey by surprise. It had only one chance to hit it. If it missed, it would take too long for a second round. The maneuverability of the megalodon was comparable to a large truck. But if the ram was successful, the prey was stunned and couldn't move. At this point, the megalodon aimed at vulnerable spots, like the fins and tail of the prey. Scientists have found many ancient whale remains with megalodon tooth marks. It turned out that the giant shark knew where its prey's vital organs were located and could strike at them. When the prey was immobilized, the megalodon bared its teeth. An adult person could easily fit into its open jaw at full height. And according to various estimates, the bite force of the megalodon was almost 11 tons. Now imagine the weight of three SUVs concentrated at the tip of a sharp tooth. That's nine times the power of the largest white shark bite, and six times the power of the modern record holder for biting, the saltwater crocodile. Here, look at a map of where the remains of the megalodon were found. South and North America, Europe, Asia, Australia. It was the master of all seas and was comfortable anywhere on our planet. We've even found some remains of the giant shark in freshwater sediments. Perhaps it wasn't afraid to enter rivers to hunt. Now, other scientists say that maybe the megalodon wasn't even a predator. All because of its size. It couldn't swim fast. It couldn't even make short dashes like the white shark. If prey tried to escape, the megalodon didn't rush into pursuit because it could never catch up with it. Another problem is the skeleton of the megalodon. The cartilage is weaker than the bones, so the musculature of the giant shark was not as massive and robust in the first place. The megalodon may even have been a scavenger and never got into fights. This is one of the reasons why ancient sharks became extinct. Megalodons like shallow warm waters, with temperatures ranging from 53 degrees Fahrenheit. But over 3 million years ago, the climate turned colder. This deprived the megalodons of territories and plenty of food. The primitive whales that had been the main diet of the giant sharks began to disappear. Faster predators took the remnants of food. The megalodon started to starve. In evolution, a new player entered the field, the toothed whales, ancestors of the modern killer whales. They lived in packs and had bigger brains than the megalodon. So, over time, they started to compete with the megalodon. They took advantage of its clumsiness. A group of killer whales could easily win a competition against a giant shark. Many scientists believe this was the reason for the disappearance of the largest shark in the world. But there are theories that the megalodon is still alive and roaming the dark waters of our planet. Several Australian fishers have allegedly encountered a shark of incredible size. But no one can confirm these testimonies. Fans of this theory believe that giant sharks can hide in deep waters away from human eyes. In the Mariana Trench, for example, it's the deepest place on our planet. It's deeper than if you stuck Mount Everest in the water. And we've even found the teeth of a megalodon there. But science says that such a giant shark couldn't live in the Mariana Trench for many reasons. One, it's too cold. The megalodon was probably a cold-blooded fish, so it had to use the warmth of its environment to survive. But the water in the Mariana Trench is cold, about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. That's because the deeper down, the less sunlight gets in there. The second reason is pressure. Every 30 feet deep increases the pressure by one atmosphere. That is, at the depth of 100 feet, the water presses you three times harder than you would feel it at the surface. The weak muscles and cartilage of the megalodon wouldn't allow it to dive too deep into the Mariana Trench. And most importantly, food. The farther from the ocean's surface, the fewer living organisms. Megalodons used to eat primitive whales, ranging from 10 to 20 feet. Small fish only inhabit the Mariana Trench. A megalodon would never be able to catch one. And judging by its size, all the megalodon did was eat and then look for food again. Compare its weight to that of a human. The average human should get about 2,000 calories a day, with an average weight of about 180 pounds. 
The megalodon weighed 470 times that and needed many more calories. So even all the fish inhabiting the Mariana Trench could hardly feed a megalodon for even a few days. So all these theories, of course, are not true. But still, it's just smart to be careful out there. (laughs) Know what I mean? The megalodon was the biggest shark to ever live. Not only that, it's one of the biggest fish and the largest predator in Earth's history. They've been known to reach lengths of up to a whopping 70 feet. That's over three times longer than the biggest great white shark on record. The females have also been found to be around twice the size of the males. The megalodon could swallow a small car without it even touching its teeth, if cars had been around that. Its teeth could grow to over 7 inches long. It looks like we're going to need a bigger boat and best make it steel-plated, as this shark can easily gnaw its way through ships. The underwater terror could bite a ship clean in half with the highest bite force ever calculated for any animal, living or extinct. The force of its ferocious bite was up to 40,000 pounds. That's around 108,000 times the strength of a human's and 10 times the force of a modern crocodile's bite. Its chomp is so strong that it makes the T-Rex's bite look about as powerful as my granny's after she's taken her dentures out. In fact, the Meg was so big and powerful that it had no natural predators. It was the uncrowned king of the seas, swimming freely from ocean to ocean. This cosmopolitan creature was found all over the world, from America to Europe and Australia to Japan, assuming there were countries back then. Meg fossils have been found on every continent except Antarctica. Everybody skips Antarctica. Science tells us that the Megalodon went extinct over 3.6 million years ago. But could they still be alive at the deepest depths of the ocean? Only around 80% of the ocean has been explored, and its deepest point, the Mariana Trench, is over 7 miles down. So who knows what's lurking at the bottom? If you did manage to make it down, it is unlikely that you'll run into a meg, though. The sharks, like us, preferred warmer coastal waters. Deep ocean living would be too cold for the beasts, and food would be scarce. Their entire bodies would also have to evolve to avoid being squished by the enormous water pressure down there. It's unlikely they're still around, but not impossible. Some good news if you do run into one is that the shark is pretty unlikely to eat you. You are way too small a meal for the megalodon, even if you have a couple of friends with you. This guy eats whales that are over 50 feet long. If you're having a beach party, though, it's a different story. In a beach full of swimmers, the shark very well might creep up, scooping several humans into its giant mouth without even chewing. But wait, let's rewind. How does the shark take down a 50-foot whale? It first bites off its fins, making the whale unable to swim away. It then casually munches it down piece by piece. Because of their size, sharks had to consume over a ton of food every single day just to sustain themselves, like me. All that food made the megalodon extremely heavy. They range from anywhere between 50 to over 100 tons. For context, that's around the same as 7 to 16 adult male African elephants. To fit all this food in, their jaws had to open pretty wide. A megalodon's jaw could span 9 by 11 feet wide. That's easily big enough to swallow two adult humans side by side. The fearsome name megalodon comes from two Greek words, mega meaning big and odont meaning tooth. So combined, they mean what? Big tooth. And it certainly lives up to its name. Just one of its chompers is the same size as a human head. It had 276 humongous teeth in total across five terrifying rows. In all of history, only a couple of saber-toothed cats and the T-Rex had consistently bigger teeth. Now that's a showdown I'd like to watch. The megalodon vanished millions of years ago, leaving only huge teeth to be found by modern archaeologists. They literally disappeared with very few traces left. Scientists believe that over time, sea levels dropped and the ocean temperatures went down rapidly. Over a third of all marine life was wiped out as the oceans cooled and a number of animals at the bottom of the food chain plummeted. This had a catastrophic effect on the hungry predators at the top. Sorry guys. It became way too cold for these sun-loving sharks too, which made it difficult for them to reproduce since they gave birth in warm waters. The megalodon is usually described as a sort of giant great white shark, but this is just a common myth. In fact, the ancestors of today's great white existed at the same time as the meg. But they weren't best buddies and were even in competition with each other. 
The great white shark was a better hunter, using its smaller size and agility to snap up the Meg's prey quickly. They were also known to eat Meg pups, who were only half their size. This didn't help the whole extinction thing. Even infant megalodons were huge, coming in at just under 7 feet. While a great white was no match for an adult Meg in a head-to-head fight, they sure weren't scared of stealing their food. This only left the bigger fish in whales for the Meg, but its food supplies began to run out as the whales swam to the cooler new seas. The whales adapted to prefer the colder temperatures, leaving our friend the Meg behind. The megalodons either starved or were frozen into extinction by the Ice Age. Rather than a great white, the megalodon is more like a modern bull shark. It had a short snout, flat lower jaw, and huge pectoral fins to support its massive weight and size. As scary as they are, these sharks were actually caring family guys. Several megalodon nursery areas have been discovered in Florida, Maryland, and Panama. They gave birth to their young in shallow water environments. We know this from discovering loads of tiny megalodon teeth found in these areas. Gee, I wonder if they had nannies, too. But how come there are so many megalodon teeth out there for us to analyze? Well, due to their messy, aggressive eating habits, sharks regularly lose their teeth. They lose a set of teeth every one to two weeks. That's 40,000 teeth in a lifetime. They must rake in a fortune from the tooth fairy. Because of this, their teeth were continuously raining down to the ocean floor. Luckily for us, they're also the hardest part of a shark skeleton, which is why so many teeth have survived and become fossilized. It's fair to say that the first discoveries of the Meg's teeth confused people. Early discoverers thought the Meg's teeth were petrified tongues of ancient serpent creatures. They even used to call them tongue stones. It's also a common myth that the megalodon was around at the same time as the dinosaurs, although this would have been pretty cool. The dinosaurs were wiped out around 66 million years ago, but the megalodons came much later. The oldest meg fossil is only around 23 million years old, but it's tricky to pinpoint the exact date. After all, calendars weren't invented yet. They became extinct way before humans even evolved. The earliest Homo sapiens, which is a fancy name for the first humans, emerged about 2.5 million years ago. But what if the megalodon shark didn't go extinct? Whale populations have dropped drastically since these guys were last round, so there'd be way fewer whales for them to chomp down on. Whales have also gotten a lot smarter and learned new defensive moves, making them way harder to take down. It's estimated that they ate around 12 tons of food each day. If they were still around and eating that much, they'd be forced to eat smaller fish, and there'd be barely enough big fish for us humans to survive on. The naughty megalodons would also be able to track fishing boats and steal the fish that they worked hard to collect. It's safe to say we'd see a lot less fish in the aisles of your neighborhood supermarket. As our ocean temperatures are heating up again, the sharks would also thrive and reproduce faster than ever. There'd be more and more of these giant eating machines in the water, reducing our fish supply even more. It would also cause massive problems for cargo ships and cruising vessels. Imagine coming into contact with one of these bad boys while you're sunbathing on the deck. Even beachgoers would be hard hit. Megalodons give birth in shallow waters, so many of our favorite beaches would quickly become dangerous shark nursing grounds. Hey, where did that beach volleyball game go? They were playing just a moment ago. The largest and most ferocious predator to ever haunt the oceans, the megalodon shark, dominated the seas for centuries before becoming extinct millions of years ago. However, scientists managed to discover very few remnants of the giant shark. Everything we know about the great sea beast we've learned thanks to fossils of its giant teeth, which are just about the size of the average human hand. Scientists estimated the size of the prehistoric shark using calculations based on the measurement of the length of a megalodon tooth. On average, the size of a megalodon shark was 33 feet long. The largest of the species could reach up to 58 feet long. However, these mega sharks may have been even bigger than we ever thought. At the Florida Museum of Natural History, a group of students examined 3D printed replicas of megalodon teeth to calculate the shark's size using the tooth length method. But something was off. Each student calculated a different size for the same shark, with their estimates ranging from 40 feet to 180 feet. A lead paleontologist took a look at the students' equations. He realized that the method they used to calculate megalodon sizes for decades isn't that accurate at all. 
So they invented a new method to calculate the megalodon's size based on the width of the megalodon tooth instead of its length. It turned out that the average megalodon would be around 65 feet long. It's almost double the size scientists previously thought and would mean that the average megalodon is the length of two school buses. A megalodon skeleton has never been discovered. Shark skeletons are made mostly of cartilage, meaning that they decompose quickly. Luckily, sharks continuously shed and regrow teeth throughout their lives. One shark can go through 40,000 teeth in a single lifetime. Scientists have managed to study different types of shark species based on their teeth alone. The megalodon shark had around 276 teeth. When they fell out, these teeth landed in seabed, where they stayed for millions of years, fossilizing. Scientists found those teeth, and they're the only real record we have of the megalodon's existence. The word megalodon means giant tooth. Its tooth is around 7 inches long. For comparison, the largest tooth of a great white shark is only 3 inches long. To find a bigger set of choppers, you'd have to go back 65 million years to find the great Tyrannosaurus rex, whose teeth measured a whopping 12 inches. Megalodon teeth have been discovered all over the world. It means that, unlike other marine animals of its time, the megalodon was intercontinental. Even today, most sharks and marine animals tend to stick to one sea or ocean. The megalodon shark swam freely around the world, moving between tropical and subtropical waters. Megalodon teeth have been found in every continent apart from the freezing cold waters of Antarctica. When a megalodon makes a starring appearance in a movie or TV show, it's portrayed to look like a giant version of a great white shark. Scientists previously believed that the megalodon and the great white shark both descended from one common ancestor. Still, it's not true. In fact, it's more likely that the megalodon was the arch enemy of the great white shark's ancestor, the broad-toothed mako shark. That means megalodon wouldn't have looked so similar to the great white after all. In reality, the megalodon would have a shorter nose than the great white, along with longer pectoral fins to give the giant shark a stockier and more threatening build. Not only was the megalodon the largest shark in the world, but it was also one of the biggest fish ever to exist. An apex predator of this size would have needed a huge diet to keep it moving. The megalodon would have eaten 2,500 pounds of food every day. The megalodon diet consisted of larger species of fish, dolphins, and even other species of sharks. Ancient fossilized whale bones with cut marks of megalodon teeth have been discovered. It means megalodons weren't intimidated by the size and tried to feast on the giant whales of the past. Scientists have used computer simulations to try and work out the hunting style of the ancient shark. Using this technology, scientists have discovered that the megalodon's attack style was very different from that of modern-day sharks. Modern sharks dive straight for their prey's most vulnerable spot, for example, the soft underbelly of a seal. The megalodon's teeth were uniquely suited to biting through tougher areas of cartilage. So, evidence suggests that a megalodon would first chew the tougher fins of their prey, rendering them unable to swim away before launching into their final attack. The mouth of a megalodon was around 10 feet wide and 9 feet tall, large enough for you to swim into without touching any teeth. However, we don't recommend that. Their mouths were so large a megalodon could swallow a small car without even having to bite down on it. Research teams from Australia and the US collaborated to work out the biting power of the megalodon using computer simulations. The results were terrifying. While the modern great white shark has the biting power of 1.8 tons of force, the megalodon could easily chomp down on its prey with a biting power of 18.2 tons. The bite of the megalodon would easily be able to cut through steel and overpower any other predator in the ocean. Scientists believe that the megalodon has the most powerful bite of any creature that has ever existed. The megalodon's bite would easily overpower the T-Rex, which has a biting force of 6 tons. Mysteriously, no one knows exactly when or how the megalodon went extinct. However, several theories are floating around as to how this could be the case. The megalodon had become extinct by the end of the Pliocene, which was a phase of global cooling that spanned over 5 million years and ended over 2.6 million years ago. New evidence suggests that the last megalodon lived at least 3.6 million years ago, right in the middle of the Pliocene era. Another theory claims that these megasharks disappeared 
because of the changing Earth temperatures occurring during the Pliocene. As the Earth cooled down, the tropical waters of the world's oceans plummeted to colder temperatures. Scientists believe that this led to the extinction of a third of all large marine animals, meaning that the megalodon's food source took a massive hit. Without much prey left to hunt, the megalodon inevitably went extinct. Megalodon sharks would give birth to their pups in waters close to the shore. The shallow coastal waters provided a perfect nursery for the newborn sharks, keeping them distant from the larger predators that lurked in the open waters. As ice formed around the Earth's poles and sea levels dropped, these pupping grounds were destroyed. The megalodon pups would have had no choice but to swim in the deep ocean waters, making them more vulnerable to dangerous predators. A new theory suggests that the explosion of a star, called a supernova, could be responsible for the extinction of the megalodon. Around 2.6 million years ago, a supernova over 150 light years away from Earth lit up the prehistoric sky and lingered there for months. A few hundred years after the supernova had faded, particles of cosmic energy from the star explosion plummeted to Earth. The energy particles carried dangerous amounts of radiation. Researchers believe that this radiation could cause the mass extinction of many marine animals, including the megalodon. Radiation from the particles extended hundreds of yards down into the ocean and was more dangerous for bigger creatures than for smaller ones. The bigger the creature is, the more radiation they would absorb. The 60-foot-long megalodon was large enough to absorb great amounts of radiation. Some people believe that the megalodon is still alive today, lurking at the depths of the ocean waters. But it's unlikely to be true. Megalodons are a warm water species, which means they would be unable to survive in the cold waters of the deep ocean. Most of the megalodon's potential prey live in shallower waters, meaning there would be very little for the megalodon to eat at a deep sea level. Simply put, if there were an animal as big as the megalodon still living today, we would have spotted it by now. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos.